Hello, welcome to another session of the Expanded States of Consciousness World Summit. My name is Michael Stone. I'm the founder of Neurodynamic Institute and Breathwork Online, and I'm your co-host for this session, and I am thrilled to be here today with Dr. Ila Manga. And uh, how are you? Welcome. Thank you, Michael. Um, thank you for having me, and it's really wonderful to be talking with you today. Um, so, uh, uh, Dr. Manga, I would like to introduce you to our audience, reading your bio, and then we'll just jump right into the conversation. Sound okay? Perfect. All right, cool. So, um, Dr. Ila Manga is an integrative medical doctor, author, speaker, and leading voice in the field of mind-body medicine and wellness. Her first book, Breathe, Strategizing Energy in the Age of Burnout, is fast becoming the go-to guide for managing energy and optimizing physical and mental health. Hila is a catalyst for change in the lives of individuals, groups, and broader society. She is a sought-after speaker, both locally and internationally, and has a revolutionary way of facilitating groups for profound transformation. Her unique focus on breathwork has been a catalyst for healing and change across many communities and sectors. She is the founder of Breathwork Africa, an organization that offers training and support to breathwork practitioners across the African continent. She lives and works in the vibrant city of Johannesburg in South Africa. Okay, so let's start out with a bit about your background. And um, many people in the medical profession tend to focus on treating symptoms through primarily medication and kind of providing a quick fix for patients. And in Western culture, that has to a certain degree kind of really permeated our way of thinking. For example, if we get a headache, our first impulse is to take an aspirin just to make the symptom go away and not to really dive in and see what's causing the headache. Um, but one of the things that really stands out for me in your medical background is that quite early in your career, you clearly saw that in order to create true healing, that you had to deal with the causes of the symptoms and that you needed to have an integrative approach, working with the body mind and spirit. How did you get that insight so early in your career and how has that informed your work since then? Mm. Thank you, Michael. You know, I think that the human need is to move away from any kind of discomfort. And, you know, if we're experiencing pain, we want the pain to go away, you know, so we will gravitate to anything that is going to take the pain away. Uh, but like you said, that has really permeated uh, the way of thinking and the Cartesian model of uh, not understanding the interconnected systems of our body has really led to the way that, um, you know, we are trained at medical school and also what patients are looking for when they come to um, a medical doctor. So it's a whole system that perpetuates itself. Mm -hmm. And I became aware of this very early on, as you said, and I began, began to notice that, you know, when I was prescribing a drug, that drug had a side effect, which then led to another symptom, which then need to be treated with another drug. And eventually, it just becomes a whole dysfunctional system that we're perpetuating. The body becomes a toxic mess. And so rather than supporting health uh, in the attempt to suppress the system, we are working against the body's natural ability to heal itself. So this whole cycle, a vicious cycle of uh, side effects and treating side effects became um, my first kind of awareness that something was not in alignment with true healing or what I believed healing uh, should be. The second thing is uh, moving away from the hospital system that is so overburdened, uh, you know, and we're seeing so many patients um, in one day that we are not really given time to really listen. And so when I moved out of the hospital system and I started to work as a general practitioner, I was afforded more time with my patients. And I started to listen more deeply. And as I started to listen, I began to see that there was a human being behind the symptom with a whole story, a history, an ancestry that was living in a particular environment. 
And I started to see the very profound connection between uh, physical symptoms and illness and the socioeconomic environment in which that person was living and working, um, as well as their history. And this became really overwhelming for me to see because I didn't feel equipped to, to hold this, to manage this, to understand this connection. How did it all work? Because this is not something that we are trained in at medical school. And I felt really, um, I suppose, disillusioned. I was confused. I was uh, lonely. I was burnt out. Um, and I was seeking a different way of practicing. I knew that the way that I was practicing was not a supporting sustainable wellness. And really, my patients became my teachers because I started to see the patterns. And if I really listened deeply, uh, my patients knew exactly what was going on. And I suppose just needed a partner in supporting the, the health. And this became my entry point into working differently. I shifted the paradigm um, to kind of being a partner with my patients to support health. And this has been an ongoing process for me. Uh, now I understand the profound uh, way that the body-mind system is connected and, and how the, the, the whole human being is in interconnected system and that it doesn't end with this physical body, that our nervous system is, is connected to this, uh, as Thich Nhat Hanh calls it, you know, the interbeing, this profound interconnectedness that we all are. And, uh, you know, when we can start to understand health from that perspective, uh, then it becomes far more empowering and far more compassionate, you know. Um, so really, this is my ongoing um, journey for myself and in my in my work. Uh, well, th thank you for that answer. And you know, it brings me to a lot of my own experiences when I go in to see doctors for one thing or another. And so many of them, it's kind of like they're put themselves up here, I'm down here, they're mm -hmm. the guru, and then they tell me what to do. And it sounds like your approach is more like self-empowering the patient, having them find out, you know, find their answers if they already have. And to Absolutely. have them go out feeling not like here and here, but really just self-empowered so they can, um, you know, have, take more control of their own health. Absolutely. And this is really one of the paradigms that uh, is really shifting and that needs to shift as we move towards the medicine of the future. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Um, so you've, you've done a lot of work looking into how to harness and manage our physiology and neurobiology to create optimal well-being with, with breath uh, playing an important role. And how can we harness our physiology and neurobiology to experience um, expanded states of consciousness? And also, what role can conscious breathing have in experiencing and receiving you know, the benefits of, of these expanded states? Mm. Well, well, you know, I think the first thing uh, that I realized is that when we looking at the nervous system, that the nervous system is not confined to just the brain and the nerves, that in fact, you know, the nervous system is a profound way that uh, we experience expanded states of consciousness. And the nervous system, as much as it is wired uh, for survival to keep us alive, it is also profoundly wired uh, to support our creativity and wired for us to experience um, expanded states of consciousness. And we're starting to see that now. And so when we study the nervous system, and for example, we just look at something as magnificent as a vagus nerve, and we follow the track of the vagus nerve as it uh, moves uh, from the brain and it sends extensions to, um, uh, to, you know, to the, the vocal cords and the thyroid, and it travels down and circles around the heart and moves deeply into the alveoli and it travels deeply into the diaphragm and then extends into the into the gut and deep down into the pelvis we see that it's a beautiful a bridge of communication and energy and information that it connects our our brain and every single cell in the body and it's just one of the ways in which information travels from the body to the brain and and back from the brain to the body 
And so, so we start to see that this nervous system connects everything to everything. And we look at the, the fascial system, that is another way that the body connects everything to everything. So now we start to see that the systems are not confined to just the nervous system, the cardiovascular system, the respiratory system, that in fact it's all one whole informational system, matter, energy, information. And, and so when we study that even further, we see that the nervous system is not confined to us, as I mentioned earlier, that the nervous system is profoundly connected to other beings. And we have mirror neurons in the brain that can, uh, you know, feel into what other people are experiencing, that our nervous system is connected profoundly to the microbiome of, uh, of the earth. When we acknowledge that this nervous system um, releases stress hormones that keep us alive, we and we acknowledge that this nervous system is also wired for creativity, then we can start to channel and transform stress energy mm-hmm. and use it as a creative force. And this is where the power of conscious breathing comes in. You know, so every thought, every feeling, every emotion, every physical state has a corresponding breathing pattern. And so if we kind of locked into that stress mode of adrenalized energy that eventually leads to burnout, then our unconscious breath will reflect that. You know, our breathing will become stuck, uh, restricted, we'll have apneic episodes. Um, You know, it reflects in patterns of dysfunctional breathing. Uh, and yet, when we experience an expanded state of consciousness, then our breathing pattern reflects that. But when we can consciously breathe in that pattern, which we do in, for example, conscious connected breathing, then the nervous system wakes up to that expanded state of, of consciousness. And it gives us the opportunity to uh, rewire and repattern and recalibrate our nervous system so that it can hold more. We're expanding the repertoire of what the nervous system can hold. And that becomes a beautiful journey, you know. And um, really, that's what I love about the whole spectrum of breathing practices that there are ways of breathing that wake us up to who we really are, this expanded state, and the ways of breathing that help us to integrate that and help us uh, to recalibrate the nervous system to hold that expanded state. Wow. So in essence, what you're saying is really through breath, we can control our emotional states, we can control our stress states, and also we can access these expanded states just by really taking control of our breathing pattern and how we breathe. Absolutely. You know, um, I've been just feeling that uh, when we speak about anxiety or stress, it is the conversation between survival and creativity. And, and, and so breath is that language. And when we understand that language and we, we get to use this language, then even when we experience stress or anxiety, it becomes a a really empowering way of understanding it and transforming it and uh, using it as a way to ride those waves of trusting the body, trusting the the body's intelligence and crafting neural pathways that essentially can create a whole new body-mind system. Mm -hmm. So essentially we can use conscious breathing to craft our way to our expanded state of wholeness and that which has always been waiting for us. And how magnificent that we have this ancient technology, the medicine of the future, I believe. Thank you. And, um, you know, many times I think people have, they go through life and they have these expanded state experiences, whether it's through, um, just this amazing workshop they go to or meditation they do or whatever. And they get all excited and pumped up and they say, oh my God, my life's going to be totally different. Um, but then they go back into their life and life kind of sucks them in and absorbs them and it all kind of goes away. And then they mm-hmm. go to the next workshop and they get all pumped up again and then they go back into their life. Yeah, um, do you have absolutely. any recommendations of how people can use breathing practices to really integrate and embed 
these experiences once they've had them as a new neural pathway so they can really have a lasting impact? Mm, yeah, thank you for that question. I think it's such an important one because when we do have a glimpse of an expanded state, it's so magnificent and uh, we want more of it, you know. And, and so the risk is that it becomes almost an addiction. Well, mm. anything can become an addiction. You know, even a spiritual practice has the risk of kind of perpetuating this pattern of spiritual bypass, you know. And, and so, like you said, we, we, want, we chase the next high and the next high and the next high. And I think that, you know, it's important to acknowledge that these expanded states of consciousness that, uh, that are offered through uh, conscious breathing or through a trance state and dance or whether it's a psychedelic or you know, plant medicine, whatever that, that, um, that opening is, the offering is for us to have a glimpse of who we are, uh, you know, and, and, and once we see that, we can't unsee that, yes. right? But as I mentioned earlier, the, the human nervous system is uh, not yet calibrated for most of us to hold that expanded state of consciousness because it is so magnificent. It is so beyond comprehension. It is so unknowable, right? Yeah. That it is, it becomes too charged for uh, for the nervous system to hold if we haven't trained it. So the real work, uh, Michael, and I really strongly believe this, uh, the importance of this is to start to do the daily practices. And it is in the daily practice of simple techniques such as breath awareness or uh, you know, coherent breathing or balanced breathing um, the small, shorter practices, uh, those are the practices that really help us to spark up the neural pathways, to embed the neural pathways, and to recalibrate the nervous system so that it can start to hold um, a greater, greater charge gradually. But that is a process, and it requires commitment and time. And, you know, we want quick fixes in today's society, but there's no way around the daily practice. And so when we, we have a relationship with breath and we faced with stresses and triggers and trauma, okay, uh, you know, something that would activate trauma, usually we, we can use that as an opportunity to, to practice uh, moving through that in a different way. And every time we do that, every time we use uh, something that is stressful in our lives or a trigger as an opportunity to respond differently through the breath, that is profoundly embedding the new neural pathway. And eventually that becomes a way of being, you know, it, you know, we, we are upgrading the software of our nervous system. And once we start to live from that place, once we start to live from that experience of our expanded state, then that expansion just becomes, uh, you know, it expands even more and that becomes limitless. It's just, it's never a place that we arrive at because, you know, we are limitless beings. And then we start to feel more connected to each other and we experience ourselves as interconnected. And we experience ourselves as part of all that is, you know, and, and that is freedom. Wow. And, and so, so then we even experience ourselves beyond the body, you know, and, and when we can experience that, then we liberate ourselves from the, the ultimate human fear of death. And, you know, well, that is freedom. So, yeah, that is really the gift that uh, that breath, conscious breath, offers in in this life, and um, how magnificent and beautiful. You know, it's amazing to me that um, you know in all of our body functions, they, they pretty much happen automatically. You know, they just go. We don't have to think about it. Uh, and twenty four hours a day, the one thing that we really have conscious control of is breath, and that it's it's so simple. But it's also so mm. profound on the same level. And I think most people just take the breath for granted. 
it's just like it's you know it, they don't even think about it it's just kind of happening in the background and they don't notice when their breath changes when they're anxious how it changes or when how it changes when they get into an expanded state and it's just something that i think people as they go through life learn to just not pay attention to absolutely and i think it's because it is so simple that we take it for granted you know it's almost too simple and often you know when i i tell people about breath uh, and i'm sure you have this too you know people say yeah but i i breathe all the time <laughs> you know um but it's the way that we breathe uh, that will determine um our relationship with ourselves and our relationship with our our health and our relationship with others and uh you know i really believe that the pandemic the covid pandemic was a, a really um a profound wake up call that offered us the opportunity to stop and um to acknowledge this life giving force that has always been with us you know and if we look at any ancient practice or any ancient tradition we will see that breath was an integral part of uh that way of living and uh activating um expanded states of consciousness this was always part of the way that we connected uh with ourselves and with the divine or with uh, nature you know and and so we coming back to it but now in a way that also is even deeper because we understand and i suppose this was the gift of um the whole cartesian model that we kind of broke down things into individual parts and we investigated them deeply so now we understand what the mitochondria looks like under the microscope right we understand how the fibrils of the vagus nerve circle around the alveoli we understand what happens on um, in a, a functional mri when we breathing you know so we are able to kind of dive deeply uh into each of these particular structures but now we can understand them as a whole and and so now we move into the medicine of the future that brings together the um, deep insights of indigenous wisdom systems but also brings together what science has revealed um and ancient wisdom traditions have revealed and what the laws of nature are, are showing to us and what the the nature of breath shows us we learn so much about life just through our breath itself and now we can bring this all together in in a way that is really quite quite incredible you know and we can even harness technology uh, to support our relationship with the with the breath and with the body so and you know once we have an understanding um then it becomes far more um i suppose easy to to engage with something like breath you know so when when we can show somebody that this is what your diaphragm looks like and this is uh, what happens when we we take a breath and we can see what happens with um uh, what happens with your heart every time your diaphragm moves that it is massaging your heart and this is what happens with your digestive system with every breath that you take and once people wake up to that um very tangible science then they're far more open to experiencing uh breath practically and once they do that wow then they're experiencing themselves in a completely new way and then you can't unknow that exactly i completely agree with you and first of all i love your reference to how breath has always been used in traditional societies even in buddhist meditation you're watching the breath and how important it's been and it, it's even been in the language like in latin and greek like where breath and spirit are the same word so this is not something new but the fact that we know so much now about the science like when i was a, growing up i would never have been interested in breath work just because at that point it wasn't understood scientifically mm-hmm. and you know I'm an engineer you know and I have a scientific background yeah. and I'm going you know prove it to me or else I'm not interested yes. Yes. and now there is science behind it it's it's completely shifted where people have where they've done MRIs of the default mode network when people are in you know doing conscious connected breathing and as you said you know they've been studying what happens in your body in every aspect during breath 
So I think it can really appeal now to everybody. You know, people who are more, I would say, on the what you would call spiritual side, but also people who are coming up in the science tradition where they want to see the science. The science is there so they can really get a sense of what's available to them, you know, by working with conscious breath. Absolutely. So it's an exciting time uh, for the field of breath work, yes. you know. And certainly in my life, you know, when I started to study breath and the science of breath, I began to learn more about the human body than uh, I did when I was at medical school, you know, truly. Um, and, and so uh, when we study breath, we actually study all of life. We, we can't separate breath from everything else, uh, whether it is uh, nature, uh, you know, the, the microbiome, um, uh, our interpersonal neurobiology to, uh, you know, uh, ancestral wisdom. I mean, it is, is limitless. It opens up uh, every aspect of life. So um, I really appreciate that um, about uh, the field, or, you know, the study of, of breathing. When we, when we experience breath and study breath, then really we experiencing every dimension of life. Yes. Um, can you give us an example of maybe either for you, from you personally or from one of your clients of a breakthrough that they've had through using a conscious connected breath or breath work and, you know, by ex uh, experiencing these expanded states? Mm. Well, in fact, I, I just um, I did a session with somebody earlier, someone who I've worked with uh, over the last few years, and he comes from a, a, a you know IT environment, consulting environment, uh, where he was a partner, and you know he's really been on a personal journey of uh, self empowerment and energy management, and and so conscious breathing has become a part of his life. And he's always had really profound experiences, but today, uh, wow, he went into a he went into a state of expanded consciousness that he's never experienced before. And I could feel it in the room. It was a tangible force in the room that even I was experiencing through me. And uh, you know, when he came out of it, he was just. He had no words to explain uh, what he experienced. And, and so really uh, what he eventually uh, described was uh, seeing himself, seeing his soul, experiencing his full expanded being that was so powerful and so limitless and so beautiful mm -hmm. that it was, it was beyond words. Um, it was, he was so overcome. And so was I that he was able to have this experience of himself in this waking life and through his body. And he said to me that nothing will ever be the same again. You know, and um, so I'm just, I mean, there are so many beautiful experiences like this. And I'm just sharing this today because it's just fresh. Um, but, but really, uh, I am constantly blown away every single day. Uh, by what the breath can open us uh, open up for us, um, you know, in my own personal life and in just working with people every day, it's so deeply humbling yes. uh, that um, we are able to have this experience of ourselves, you know, and and I really feel passionately that every person has the right to experience this, and you know, especially in a country like um, like ours. Uh, where we are so under-resourced in terms of, of healthcare, uh, that here is a, a technology of, um, of wellness that is accessible for everybody and to everybody. You know, that there is a well-being model, a holistic model uh, that is accessible to every single person. And how exciting is that, you know? And, and so not everybody has access to conscious connected breathing, but even simple breath awareness, simple breath awareness is an entry point because it reestablishes a sense of agency for, for someone. 
and and it invites us back into the physical body so that we can experience a sense of safety again. And so many of us, um, you know, have not had that experience of safety within the body. And and very slowly and gently, with simple practices like balanced breathing, inhaling for five seconds, exhaling for five seconds, or simple breath awareness that can wake up our interoceptors so that we can start to feel and sense into the body again can be absolutely profoundly life-changing. And and when we can understand the science of this and we can teach and share the breath responsibly, then I believe that it is a, a really important entry point into people feeling uh, like they have agency uh, in terms of their health and that they are able to take control of their well-being in some way, uh, you know, in a world where we feel that so much of um, uh, the power in, to support our health has been taken away from us. And this is another paradigm in terms of, of well-being. You know, we're moving away from this int- extrinsic kind of system, uh, you know, where so much is imposed on us to really feeling empowered um, and, and and finding this intrinsic source of energy and uh, and self-regulation and entry into expanded states. Yes, exactly. And I love like when you were talking about like regaining kind of a feeling of safety in your body, like trust in yourself. And what I've found in my own practices, especially many people with trauma, one of the side effects was like, you know, they obviously couldn't handle something when they were younger It overwhelmed them and it ended up turning into trauma. And so they've kind of developed this almost unconscious thinking pattern that they can't trust themselves because they couldn't. Ha- and just redeveloping a sense of safety and that sense of self-trust many times is a huge step in working through, you know, these traumas in their past. Absolutely. You know, and uh, you know, the nervous system is intelligent. And so when we experience something that is overwhelming, uh, the nervous system has a way of protecting us from that. And sometimes that is just kind of uh, disconnecting from the pain that we experience in the physical body. And um, we disassociate and uh, without feeling that that is a pathology. And if we can recognize that it's part of the body's intelligence of protecting us, that it served its purpose. And we can thank it for that, you know, and we realize that now we're in a different place. And what I often see is that when people experience or perceive safety in the environment or because they, uh, their life circumstances have changed or they're in a more stable relationship, then a lot of the, the, the symptoms will rise up to the surface and it can confuse them. Why am I feeling this now when everything else around in my life is settled? And it's because everything in your life is settled that, you know, there's this perception of safety and now I can do this work. So even the symptom and the illness is part of the healing and the invitation to reintegrate. And so safety is really the key in dropping into that state of healing, you know, and we, we can't relax. The body cannot get into or activate the healing parasympathetic nervous system response, the rest and digest mode, if we do not experience or perceive safety. So safety is the absolute key in uh, in creating uh, that environment that will support the healing process. And, you know, that's where breath comes in, but it's also the relationship between you and your your uh, healthcare practitioner or your breathwork practitioner. Sometimes it's not so easy to experience safety within ourselves. And, and it's through the relationship with another uh, that we can experience that first and then start to kind of integrate that into our being. You know, and that is the role of, um, you know, anyone who's working with us is to provide that or, or really yeah, create that experience of safety. Mm. Yes, exactly. Mm. I mean, do you have a short breathing experience that you can demonstrate that the uh, audience can use to get, get out of their normal everyday state of consciousness? Mm. Uh, yeah. So one of my favorite practices is um, to kind of, Locate where in your body today you're experiencing the most heightened sensation or most heightened discomfort. 
So I invite you, uh, if you're listening now, just to find that in your body as you just begin to exhale and arrive in your body. And as you do, and as you connect with the gentle breath cycle, begin to feel into your body. Where may your body be holding uh, the most tension today? Where are you experiencing the most heightened sensation today? And you don't have to know what that's about. Simply feel into where your body is calling your attention today and keep your awareness here. And as you keep your awareness there and holding that, begin to feel into where in your body you are experiencing the most spaciousness today, the most openness and ease. And so holding that awareness of tension, discomfort, and holding this experience of ease, as you inhale, imagine that you are expanding that sense of ease and you are circling around that point of tension. And on the exhale, imagine that you are dissolving that tension back towards the space of ease. And once again, as you inhale, moving the ease towards the tension. And on the exhale, moving the tension, dissolving that towards that space of ease and spaciousness. Once again, inhaling towards tension. And on the exhale, dissolving tension towards the spaciousness. Eventually feeling that this tension is starting to kind of unravel and dissolve. So rather than disconnecting, pushing this discomfort away, you're opening up into it, dissolving. You're freeing up the energy of this tension so that it flows back to circulate freely through you again. So very gently, just keep this connection alive, sending breath back and forth between these two points. And notice how that begins to change the way you're experiencing the tension. Just a few more breaths here. Moving breath back and forth. Really using the softness of the exhale to unravel, to melt out. Now, very gently begin to lengthen the inhale and exhale as you're experiencing a unified flow of energy through your whole body, allowing the breath to circulate freely through you, allowing energy to circulate freely through your whole body with your breath, just like flowing water. I enjoy this experience for a few moments. Feeling your feet on the ground once again. Gently become aware of your external environment and your internal environment at the same time. And when you're ready, you feel ready, you can gently open your eyes if they are closed and arrive back into the space. Oh, thank you for sharing that little practice with me. Mm. Wow, that totally worked. <laughs> yeah, My simple, but it's different space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a it's a very quick and um, effective little practice that you can do at any time when you're feeling that you you're holding something. Um, you know, your body is holding something for you, and you can just kind of free it up. 
And through that freeing, you can experience that flow and that expanded experience of yourself. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, breath work and really the whole role of expanded states over the last, you know, five, six, seven years has really come much more into the public consciousness. You know, back in the 70s and 80s, you know, all the psychedelics were banned and it was kind of like away for many, many years, everything was underground. And now it's really coming back to the point where it's starting to become more available to people. Um, what do you see as the future of, of breathwork and, and expanded states uh, you know, in the next mm -hmm. decade? Mm. Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, I'm really excited to see where uh, conscious breathing is going. Already so much has opened up in the field and I really see this being integrated into all educational systems right from kindergarten, okay, uh, right to primary school and then to secondary school and into the curriculum of uh, healthcare professions. Uh, you know, I really see this happening and it's really exciting that every healthcare practitioner will be equipped um, with this tool, with the skill, with the science and that they're able to share it with more people. I So I see this being integrated more into health systems, that healthcare providers can uh, use this as a way to support their own energy, that it becomes a way of building resilience, that it becomes part of business systems, that every board meeting will start with conscious breathing, that in fact, every meeting that happens will start with conscious breathing because it shifts the place from which we're operating and engaging and innovating and creating. And um, I believe we're ready for this as humanity, you know, and as much as systems are starting to disintegrate and collapse, there's something else rising up. And I believe that breath has an integral part to play in reconnecting the fragmented and disconnected aspects of ourselves and, and systems um, from healthcare systems to socioeconomic systems to political systems um, to ecological systems that we can begin to start living in the way that we have been designed and that uh, the natural laws are inviting us to um, live in alignment with. Well, that's a very beautiful, powerful vision. Yeah, thank you for that. Thank you, Michael. Uh, so, so thank you so much for everything that you've uh, shared with us today and all of the amazing work that you've been you know, contributing to the field of breath work, to the field of expanded states of consciousness. How can people um, find out more about your work? Mm, so you can look at our website, breathworkafrica.co.za. Uh, so that's the organization that I founded and through which we offer our training programs and teaching programs. And um, if you'd like to connect with me personally, my personal website is drilamanga.com. And uh, yeah, you can also find me on Instagram at ilamanga. Yeah, thank you. And uh, we'll also have all of that information in the bio beneath your video so people can find that very easily. Uh, and again, thank you so much for uh, uh, being part of this summit and for giving us the benefit of uh, all this wisdom that you've gained over the last few decades. And I really, really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed it too, Michael.